Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below. Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot, bringing you the Madden 18 uh, tip video. Uh, we're going to go over passing today. Passing tips uh, really advanced to a certain extent that a lot of people really don't use and they don't realize how much of an advantage it really gives you. These are things you'll see a lot. If you watch the Madden Challenge Championships and stuff like that, you see guys pass leading, uh, throwing certain types of passes and stuff like that that you don't see in typical uh, games that are really, um, you know, give them a huge advantage. I mean, you can beat certain coverages just by pass leading alone. Uh, and I'm going to show you guys how to do that today. I'm also going to go over things like playmaking. A lot of people don't know how to playmaker. Uh, that can really get you out of a jam. It's definitely not your first option, but it's something that you really should know how to do. Um, or, you know, you might need to use more often than not, uh, rather than just running with the quarterback, which a lot of people is their last resort, and that's really what they try to do. Um, and I guess I'll also go over bullet passing, lob passing, stuff like that. Basically, the whole arsenal of passing, uh, with the exception of the new passing feature, the uh, precision passing, or whatever they call that. I already made a video about that. Um, that's not not nearly as used I would say as these techniques are but uh, if you want to see a video on that I'll pop a link for that it should be popping up in the top right corner right now um, like I said I already did that video it's a very popular video uh, but this is not about that so this is about um, things that have been around a little bit longer but I still find people don't use quite enough even I don't use it as much as I probably should pass leading I definitely have bullet passes and lot passes I mean I, I, I guess I really do use that stuff quite a bit and if you watch my gameplay videos you see that uh, you might not even be noticing that you're seeing that but uh, we're gonna go over that stuff today so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick a play and uh, we're going to go um, you know, I don't think I have a defense set up right now so we're just going to go with something like an empty base it really doesn't matter uh, actually we'll go with a running back I'll go with a tray opening right here it doesn't really matter what the play is because I don't think I have a defense on the field I'm just going to go over the basics then I'm going to show you how to apply that so we're just going to go with a random play it doesn't matter uh, I guess the defense is still out there I'm going to fix that real quick all right, so we got no defense out here because I don't really want to be dealing with pressure. I don't want it to force me to talk faster than I need to. Uh, but basically, um, you know, this is this is your setup look right here. I'm just going to first go over playmaking because that's probably the easiest part. I think in the past you had to hold like L2 or something. I don't even remember because it's not a part of the game anymore. But now once the ball is snapped, all you have to do is use your right stick um, and basically hold it in a direction, whichever you want. So it's going to work with the nearest receiver, which right here is my R1 route. So I'm going to send him back up the field. And that's all it is. Like I said before, you had to hold a button as well. I don't remember what it was. All right, so now I'm going to go over pass leading. And this is just as simple as uh, playmaking, except for now, instead of holding or motion or functioning your, uh, your receiver with the right stick, it's actually the left stick. And all you really have to do is hold the left stick in the direction you want to throw the ball while you're doing it. So here, I'm going to pass lead outside. Uh, pass lead outside a little bit too much. Not the biggest deal, though. Um, but that's, you know, you see how the ball's trajectory changes. I'll go ahead and I'll run a regular right now. And I'll lob it up. As you see, it's just right down the middle of the field. So obviously, if I were to do that in certain coverages, that would be a problem. I want to throw away from safeties. Um, I'll show you in a minute how this is really helpful against beating cover two. Um, but let's go ahead and let's just keep, you know, pass lead outside. You can see that's more like a back shoulder throw. I didn't do it quite as dramatically, and it was a bullet pass, not a lob. So, you know, what your combination is going to really matter. If I, if I, if I lob that type of throw actually i didn't even do it right <laughs> gotta do it again so, but yeah your, your combination and i didn't go over lobbing and uh, bullet passing yet i guess i'll do that in a second here but uh, your combination of uh, pass leading and what type of pass you can see how that was a lob pass sends it out of bounds but if it was a bullet pass it'd be more like a back shoulder throw so this is you know in a lot of ways um you know this is really uh there's a that was a lob again or not a lob that was just a, a regular pass there uh, but you can see how it's going to change the type of effect you're going to get. So I guess since I went over that, I really should go over how to bullet pass, how to lob, and uh, regular passing. They're, they say to do like a regular pass, you like hit the button twice. I'm not a fan of that. Uh, I, that's what I did right there. Uh, I rarely do that in the game. I'm more of a lob or a bullet pass person. And then I, I consider the third option to be more like a timing pass. I'm not sure the actual name, uh, but that's just like your straight pass. Like if you don't, if that's not holding it or tapping it, that's just you know that's to me is is, is is like uh, something I've been doing since like the first Madden I played. But your but your lob one on one, you have a fast guy. Lob it out there, let your receiver go and get it. Um, if you're watching my money play videos, you see me do that more often than not. Uh, I'll say, you know, lobby, lobbing passes a lot of times will get receivers open. If you have a tight man coverage, 
uh, like say, you know, Ertz here is running that type of route. If the coverage is tight, but there's nobody in front of Ertz, you can lob that up and you can switch to receiver and sprint out to that, hit a rack catch, get some open. Lob passes will get a lot of guys open if there's nobody in front of the player, which a lot of people don't really understand that. So if I have a tight press coverage on Jeffrey, say I got a cornerback right in his face, I know pre-snap, all I got to do is wait till he's parallel with him and just tap that button, lob that up, and a lot of times, I went a little too far, but a lot of times, my receiver will be able to run once the ball's thrown they get an advantage over the cornerback um, if there's nobody over the top obviously if there's somebody over the top and you lob it you're going to get picked but if there's nobody out there if you see there's nobody out there that lob pass is huge and a lot of people don't know that so the other one's bullet pass bullet pass obviously is tight window passing you know you just hit the receiver icon hold it um, and you're going to, you know, say there's you got a guy splitting two linebackers. Um, say you got, you know, two linebackers at each hash. I'm waiting for it to come back. Say you got linebackers running their yellow zones in the middle of each hash. Obviously, in that scenario, you want to bullet pass it right through the middle, um, and that's really going to be important. Bullet passing is probably one of the most used passes and one of the most useful passes. All right, so now we went over the basics. I'm going to show you some uh, techniques on how to apply these uh, tools to win on you know everyday plays like cover two beaters which a lot of people cover two is really good again now once they fix the outside zones um, so I'm going to show you some really simple techniques to make cover two very average so let's go ahead and let's uh, let's just pick something out of the gun I'm going to pick something out of the tray open offset like I said this is a little technique I'm going to show you uh, I'll pick the FL dig at the bottom all right, so what I'm going up against here is a cover two, uh, Tampa two actually, which is uh, the cloud flats, which are typically supposed to, to cover deep. Now, if it's a cover two sink, it might work a little bit different uh, where the cornerback might cover deep first, uh, but it really depends. Hard flats, obviously, that's another cover two concept where uh, Josh Norman, the outside corner, will cover down first and leave the open one open. So two, this will be two out of three cover two scenarios. You just have to kind of keep an eye on one guy, which is your outside corner there, uh, which is Josh Smith. So all I'm really going to do is I'm going to send Aggie on a, uh, a fade route, not a streak, and then I'm going to put my circle route, Smith, on a, um, a zig route. So you're going to see how that zig route will typically hold Josh Norman down long enough. His coverage is supposed to be deep, but it'll hold him down long enough that Aguilar will get behind him and I can pass lead outside. If I do a regular pass, it won't get open, but a pass lead will. So let's go ahead and let's rock this. Uh, you can see how there holds him down. Hopefully I get it over the shoulder there, and you see we've got a nice cover two beater, 30 yard touchdown, easy. So that's not really a money play, it's just a concept that really works. Now I want to show another one in a cover two, which is the, out of the same play. FL dig, pick it again, uh, we'll go to, um, we'll go dime, it really doesn't matter, and we'll just pick another cover two play here. Uh, we'll go, I think we did Tampa two last time, we'll go Tampa two again. So this year, all I'm really going to do is put Aguilar in a drag. I'm going to block the running back because I don't want him to mess up what I'm about to do. But typically, I would keep the running back doing what he's doing. But basically, right here, I'm just going to use her, or I'm going to pass lead Aguilar up the, up the center there. Actually, um, could have playmaker to be the same because he was the closest guy. Uh, but basically, you see how he turns upfield, and I didn't even really get the dramatic one that I was expecting. But uh, cover two is always vulnerable up the middle, so he's turning up the field because I passed let it, and he gets a nice big catch and run. Um, he's going to get, I mean, this play is open regardless. Uh, but like I said, I mean, you could play maker it too, which is nice. I mean, you get, you know, down, now he's going downfield, he's getting even more. So if you combine the two, uh, it's even better. Um, but uh, let's get the play going here. But, um, you know, that's why I said, like, the playmaking option, I would want to take blown away because I don't want to mistake the running back um, last second if he's too close or if he's closer than R1. But you see there, I playmaker and I pass let it up, and it's just a much just a much bigger play than the, than the regular slant. So let's go ahead and let's see how it works without the playmaking, without the pass leading. You see him getting, like, 25. Um, so there, you know, I mean, it's, it's still a pretty good play, but um, you can get much bigger plays because that cover, too, has a huge hole up the center uh, typically. So, um, and I, you know, I haven't really spent a lot of time, um, you know, I guess I could also show you guys stuff like, you know, lobbing and stuff like that. I'll show you that real quick, just one time, how to, how to, how a lob pass is effective. Basically, I'm going to show you uh, what to look for, um, for basically a, a really obvious lobbing scenario that a lot of people don't necessarily use. So what we're going to do um, is we're going to pick something on defense that's a single high safety and uh, we're going to press. Now I have control of both now. Uh, but this is the look you're going to want to have right here. So uh, anytime you see this and it looks like a single high, typically a single high will have 
Um, this is a robber concept where one of these guys dropped down. But typically a single high will have one safety deep, which a lot of people are running this year. Uh, a lot of pros are running this year. And it's a, it's a pretty uh, pretty decent technique. But if you have that and you see a cornerback like the, down in Jeffrey's face there, uh, where typically when I play uh, online, I always have one do-it-all tall receiver like a Jeffrey who'd be my number one on the other side. My number two is typically a guy who all I do is send him deep pretty much every play uh, for scenarios like this. And then my slot guy is another speedster. So um, that's typically my setup. That's more of like a West Coast style of setup which is which is typical of that um, a lot of teams have that uh, type of one two three uh, but basically Jeffrey's not ideal for what I wanted to do I'd rather a speed through there like I'd rather have Smith on my two but it really doesn't matter so this is what the look would look like and the second I see this pre-snap I'm like Jeffrey right there I'm sending up to him and all I really have to do is look for one animation uh, which is basically him getting even with the corner and all I know is I gotta just lob that up and if I lob it, like I said, if he's faster, I'll be able to run under it. He's not the speedster that I want. Um, but, you know, I could probably do, I could try to do the same thing with Smith here. Um, he's a little bit faster. He's like a 90 speed or something like that. But same scenario. So in that, in that instance, you know, if I see him beat that press just enough, I lob it up. It's my turn to rack catch. Because computer defenders don't have rack catch. There's no rack catch for the cornerback. I mean, the rack catch really is like an acceleration burst um, for, that, for that receiver. So uh, that's something to look forward to. So now I have another play where basically I have my crossing receiver, which is Jeffrey. And uh, in this scenario, if it's a man coverage, I wish once again it wasn't Jeffrey. I keep getting stuck with him. But in this scenario, this is another scenario where you're going to lob it to get him open. He's covered to an extent. But look at the acceleration burst I get when I lob it. Look at the separation I get and give my receiver a chance to do when I lob it out. Let's do that one more time because I actually uh, didn't really run too long. But look at, I mean, he's covered and I'm sacked. But if you, I'm going <laughs> to, let's do that one more time. I, I picked a little bit of a blitz here. But uh, basically, lobbing it up, I mean, look at that. I have an opportunity to acceleration burst. Um, the, the cornerback just stands no chance. Whoever's covered, the cornerback safety, whatever, it doesn't matter uh, because that's how it goes. When you have, the, lobbing is a man beater. The concept of lobbing a lot of times, if there's nobody in front, lobbing is a huge man beater. And we'll do it one more time as the pressure comes in. I get, you know, smacked in the face. But um, just remember that. Bullet passing is best for zones. Lobbing is best for man. That's probably the easiest way to break it down. So I hope you guys learned something today. I hope I gave you some knowledge. Uh, other than that, if you want to see more tip videos, do me a favor, hit the like button, and I'll do that. And that's it. Thanks for watching, man. Money shut out.